So welcome to a first impressions review of the Nike Alphafly Next Percent 2. Toes down, I'll be free into the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my ass. Took so many years, I've been swaying for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up. Bank roll, bank roll. Euro, Euro, peso. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I've got a first impression review of the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 in this beautiful, gorgeous proto colorway. So the Alpha Fly 2 builds upon a pretty much a polarizing shoe from Nike, the Alpha Fly 1. And for context, I'm just going to call it the OG. It's been around since late 2019 when Elliot Kipchoge broke 159 at the 159 challenge. Since then, it's been a pretty much a Marmite shoe. I'm a very much a late adopter to the Alpha Fly and the OG in specific. I only race in it as recent as May. And for me personally, it's something that I've kind of grown to love. I don't flat out and say, oh my God, it's the best shoe ever. I can't really say that, but I really have grown to love it for the longer distance and more than anything to the way it helps to protect my legs. I think that is the biggest benefit of the Alpha Fly pretty much of the Alpha Fly 2 as well, which I'll go to later in this video. So what we are gonna talk about is the shoe, the specifics. I'll have later videos down the line which talk about how the difference compares to the first version and the second version, and also how that sort of ties in with some data and some metrics, which I'll plug together and release in the next week or so. Why this shoe is different from the first. The biggest questions that I get asked, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is how is it different to the other? Does it correct the mistakes of the first one? Is it something that I can pick up? Does it have a performance upgrade? So I'm trying to answer as many questions as possible that you do get and I've got personally with the Alpha Fly and see if version two actually fixes some of those mistakes. So you can make a better judged impression on whether or not you want to drop the money on a shoe like this. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. Going into a few specifics about the shoe. So the Alpha Fly 2 actually weighs in heavier than the original. I've got it listed as 243 grams in a UK size 8.5 compared to 226 grams in a UK 8.5. That's a little bit disappointing. I'm not gonna lie in terms of the upper and the, the way the outsole and the midsole has increased in weight, but Nike have included a lot more foam in this shoe. It has a higher stack height compared to the OG. The upper has been redone, re-meshed, re-reinforced. It now fits a little bit more different, a little bit more snugger to your foot. With that in mind, it has added a weight increase, which me personally on the run today, so I did an interval session in the actual shoe, I can't really say I felt it. The only thing that I'll say that, and I'll touch upon this in later videos is, the amount of your way your feet turn over, your cadence, vertical oscillation, your ratio, everything like that gets affected with a slightly heavier shoe. And for me personally, having raced in the Vaporfly pretty much for the last three years, I notice it straight away. So that is point number one. It is true to size. I have gone 8.5 as I've done with my OG size and obviously all my Vaporfly. I would recommend you stick true to size. This does fit a lot more snug. It has a redone toe box, a more comfortable fit. The Atomnit is still very much the same. It still feels exactly the same, a little bit less wiry than the first version, but it now has a more of a snugger feel. Your feet can move, but not as much, which I prefer. I think it's way better. I always thought the OG was a little bit on the oversized, but this has more of a comfortable fit and it does address some of the issues in terms of how it fits and feels in terms of the way you wear it and how it feels on the run. Nike state that this is an eight mil offset. I can't find any official data. Again, in later videos, I will get down to the technical specs about the shoe, but for now, the ride feels good, feels pretty comfortable. Very, very similar to with all the other road racing shoes in the lineup. It is a road shoe, it's a racing shoe. You can use it for your sessions. I personally would probably use it for the half marathon and marathon distances. Anything below that, then you've obviously got a plethora of other racing shoes. You've got the Vaporfly, you've got other brand shoes, RC Elite, Adidas version of shoes. You've basically got the Asics. So there's tons and tons of other options out there for the faster and shorter distances. But for the marathon distance, everyone swears by it. I've yet to race in a marathon, so I can't really say that for myself, but having done 14, 15 miles in this recently, I felt fresh as a daisy the next day. So there must be proof in the actual pudding itself. The price is 275 pounds, which is steep. It is very, very steep. Not many people are gonna spend 275 pounds on a pair of shoes, considering the market comparison, the competitors out there are a lot, lot cheaper, but 
if you've loved the Alpha Fly, if you've loved the first version, no doubt you'll love the second version. And if it comes in this colorway and very, very similar colorways coming out very, very soon, it is probably one of the best looking shoes out there on the market. And the colorway itself is this proto colorway, goes in line with the trilogy that they released in the Streak Fly. Vaporfly and now the Alpha Fly. So this has the development marking of how many kilometers were ran in the test pair of these shoes, which is quite a nice touch to this shoe. And it's obviously got the it's got the added orange extra labels on there, which is a very very nice touch. But it just looks great. You cannot beat a white pair of shoes. I love it. I think it looks fantastic. Pair it with a white pair of socks, and you are on to a winner. Remember, look good, race good. Remember that. And question number one is how does it fit? So. They've redesigned the upper in terms of the way the mesh of the actual atom it fits. For me personally, it fits a lot more snugger, as I mentioned. No issues with the heel counter. So you've got some padding at the back of the heel as you do normally with Nike shoes. These work pretty, pretty great. I laced these up once, checked my laces, and I was done. So really nice lockdown, really nice feeling. The tongue itself and the laces are similar to what you get previously on the actual Alpha Fly 1. And again, lace them up. What's added, they obviously increased the size of this loop, which is good, so it helps you getting on and off. And they've also added this, which is nice, so you can actually pull it quite wide. I haven't really had an issue with trying to get the shoe on. As long as you know how to get it on in terms of just loosening the laces, loose them off, and then put your foot in, and it kind of acts pretty nicely as you can pull along these two tabs, which is great. This front tab actually is quite nice because it sits at the bottom of your laces so that you can actually put and have no pressure on the top of your foot, which is quite nice. And also you can actually tuck the laces underneath, which might be like a nice little hack in terms of keeping them nice and snug as you run and kind of sit nicely in there. So the tongue itself is obviously stitching. It's actually got a little bit of padding. If you can see, it's kind of a little bit squishy. It, I had no issue in terms of feeling on the top of my foot. That felt pretty nice. Once my foot was locked down, it felt pretty snug. In terms of the toe box, again, as I said, it was true to size. It does feel a lot more snugger for me. And I've got a flat foot, which means that it sits pretty much on the bed of the shoe. And I felt as if that I could move my feet around, but anything more than that, a half a size down would be literally too tight. And I wear cushion socks. So in terms of how the foot actually feels and slips in, number one, in terms of comfort, the biggest question that I get asked on the OG do you feel the arch which is at the bottom and i can categorically say that i did not feel it at all even when i put my foot into the shoe when i started jogging in the shoe and when i started my session in the shoe it was not there i couldn't feel it at all post run considering i do have a flat foot i should be able to feel it no issues in terms of soreness achiness so that is a big upgrade in terms of what people felt in terms of the first version, what I felt. First version wasn't that bad. I never really felt it. Initially, when I put my foot into it, you can feel it, it's a little bit prevalent, but as you start running in it, it kind of just flattens out and dampens out. So big upgrade. So if you did have that issue, you're not gonna feel it as much in this one because it feels like it has been addressed because the shoe is a little bit wider in terms of the footbed. Question number two is how is the ride compared to the narrowness and also the way it moves around corners? So Nike have actually updated the actual volume and envelope of this particular shoe so the shoe now is a little bit wider at the heel and it's a little bit wider on the forefoot which is a good thing because those people who have maybe slight concerns about stability and security as you plant your foot the way the leg lands and having maybe some fragility along with the ankles etc you shouldn't really feel that because the platform is pretty wide i never had any issues with the first pair and this one it felt very, very comfortable, even just walking in the shoe. It didn't feel like the first version, which I think is a huge plus in terms of just taking away any of that insecurity about how it actually fits around your foot. You're able to move pretty well. I found cornering in it pretty good. I was running a loop today, which was had four bends all the time and left and right felt pretty good. No issues in terms of and no second thought in terms of, oh, do I need to judge myself as I take this corner? I didn't have to think that. I never thought about that in the back of my mind. So that's a positive in terms of having that wider flatbed. You've obviously got a decoupled groove and obviously got more visibility on the actual plate itself, which is great. But there is a little bit of extra Zoom X, which is sitting at the bottom of the pod. And again, question number three that goes into, do these still have the same sound as version one? I can't really say that I found the first version incredibly slappy. The tempos were. The tempos were awful for me, but... The first version was okay. I don't think these are as loud and I'll insert a clip right now from the Alpha Fly 2 slap cam.
they, as you heard straight off the bat, they sound a little bit as normal, as neutral as they can be. Again, it's just the sound of rubber hitting the ground. It doesn't sound anything too different compared to any other road shoes. If you do think it sounds different, leave a comment down below and then we can have a discussion on what you think that sounds like compared to my perception. But I think that improves the performance of the shoe. The biggest thing that people have always said is how noisy the shoe is and I don't think it is that noisy. So in terms of the actual outsole, you've got a whole new grip of the shoe, which is brilliant. It's so much more streamlined. It just feels a lot lighter. It just feels like it's got more better grip. It's got more nimble little lugs on there and it just feels like it's gonna able to wick water away pretty well. In terms of the fit and the performance upgrades, I really felt as if once I put my foot down into the shoe, I felt the pop. That extra bit of Zoom X works really, really nice. It's very, very small. If you are super used to the Alphaflow, OG version, these are going to be a very small incremental upgrade to what you feel. The biggest upgrade to me is the comfort of the shoe. They've hugely, hugely improved that and I think that is the biggest plus of this shoe. And again, that rubbing of the front of the shoes, this is a little bit less prevalent in terms of your foot hitting the front of the shoe only because you've got a better lockdown in the midfoot, you've got a better lockdown in the heel, there's no slippage whatsoever, which means that your foot shouldn't slide, it shouldn't hit the front of the shoe, which could cause blisters and some issues with the shoe itself. And they've obviously squared off the corners, which is quite nice. So do not take your shoe off by putting the other shoe on this as using it as a lever, do not do that. You will create a split line there. So just as word of warning, do not use that because you will split the Zoom X and that would not be good. You can see pretty much I'm using most of the actual mid middle part of the shoe. There are some elements that have kind of gone to that part as the foot has sort of come in and rolled its way forward. It does have that nice feeling of that rocker feeling. Again, if you land on your heels, which isn't a bad thing, there's no right or wrong way about this, you will have that sensation of it pushing through, but this shoe is designed that you do land on your midfoot, you do get that propulsion of the pods, and it does sort of spring you off every so often, which is the way it's designed, it's the way it sort of it activates the levers, the mechanics, the way the plate sits in with the actual pods itself. Very, very snappy. The only thing I would say is for intervals, you're gonna want a lighter shoe. I think for anything over a mile, anything over sort of longer tempo reps, if you're gonna use this shoe, anything which has longer repeats where you're cruising, this is pretty, pretty good. The saving grace for this shoe and why people might choose this shoe for intervals, for track work, for tempo work, any sort of speed work is basically the saving of your legs. These will save your legs. The amount of energy return, the amount of cushion, the amount of protection that you get for your legs is probably one of the reasons of choice that people will use this in terms of a recovery perspective. I'm not saying you need to buy a pair of shoes for £275 to go run your easy runs in them. I'm not saying that completely. But what I am saying is that they offer a huge variant of energy protection and whilst they are marketed as a racing shoe they are how you use them is totally up to you how you have a rotation is totally up to you if you want one shoe you'll have one shoe but again these offer a really good added benefit in terms of saving your legs moving on to a summary is this shoe right for you well for me personally it's a big big benefit and upgrade from the first version simple as that i'm being completely honest with you again this is one of those shoes which it just fits and it is super comfortable to wear the performance upgrade is going to improve because it has the same level of performance as the first version if not better so the added extra zoom x on the pods the wider platform the redone outsole the com combination of the upper the lockdown the tongue the loops is a huge plus for me. So should you go and buy it? Again, up to you. If you love the first version, then I would highly recommend looking out for the next few colorways of this shoe. The Proto colorway was limited edition. So that kind of wraps up my initial first impressions review of the shoe. Really fun shoe to run in. It always is with a high performance shoe. If you did like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and to consider subscribing to the channel and helps share the video as much as possible to everyone else out there. So for me and the Alphafly 2, Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next few videos.